Hello, Brother Sewing and Crafting family. I'm Angela Wolf. And I'm Mae Flom. And we are so excited to see you. So, Mae, I think we, we dress it like we match. We <laughs> did. We, it's a green day. Color coordinating. So, how are you? It's uh, Summer is kind of here. It feels so good in Southwest Michigan. And I'm just happy to be here. It's so great to see you, too. Good to see you too. Yeah, the mood is getting stronger and stronger for summer here. We've got two more days of school. So it's oh. like that close. Two more days that's of school and it's summer vacation time. That's very close. So for those of you that have never been here before, say hi, say where you're from. We are Brother Brand Ambassadors and we are taking over the Brother Facebook and crafting YouTube and Facebook pages. And we can see all your comments and questions as we go. So if you have questions as we go along, we will be sure to answer them. And I see YouTube is full of everyone today. Awesome. Hey. So, May, I'm very excited about what you're going to be showing today. I just saw a sneak preview. I think people are going to be pretty excited. So tell them about it. So today what I'm going to be doing is we're not actually going to make a full project today. What we are going to do today is talk about the ways that you can use the scan and cut at home to prepare for crafting on the road. So you wouldn't take the scan and cut with you, you wouldn't take everything with you, but things that you can do with the machine that then prepare you so that you're keeping your creativity, whether it's just that you wanna be outside more, or maybe you're going to a special event, or you're going on a trip, but you'll have lots of downtime. Like we're going on a family vacation and the weather forecast right now is lots of, um, lots of storms, lots of rain. And I'm thinking, well, that's, it's fine, because it's supposed to be a relaxed kind of a vacation, but that means more inside afternoons where maybe I'd want some embroidery projects or some journaling or scrapbooking kind of things to do. Good idea. All right, well, since everybody's thinking about maybe getting on the road this summer, take it away. Let's see what you have. Sure thing. So one of the things that I actually used to long ago, everybody remembers when we used to go out and do things, right? For craft events so if you're going to the sewing store for an event all day or all weekend or the scrapbook store or crafting retreat of some kind you wouldn't want to bring all of your tools and all of your things with you for two reasons the first reason being space usually at those kind of events you get um a, like a six foot table which is great or maybe four feet depending but it's amazing how much stuff piles up in that space and how little space you actually have to create if you've got all your tools in your machines. But when you like to create with those tools and machines, how in the world are you doing it where you're still utilizing those, but you're also doing things in a way that is actually gonna work for being out of the house, away from your normal home crafting setup. So that's kind of our focus today is how are we gonna do this? And I've got five different ways that I'm gonna show you I think five, we'll see, I think that's what I said. <laughs> but there's lots of different ways to do it. So we'll start on paper. We'll start on paper and one of the things that you can do, for example, here I have a piece of paper that has lots of different designs and I can already tell you that what I want to do is cut out those designs. Well, instead of bringing the paper and having to hand cut them at, whether I'm at the event or on a vacation or whatever, um, if I'm wanting to cut these out and use these in my journal or in my scrapbook or whatever, instead of bringing the scan and cut or instead of hand cutting, what I can do is go ahead and cut these out and kind of create myself like a little kit. That's going to be, essentially, that's what you're going to want to do um, long run. Let's see, we've got our map here. So in this instance, we're wanting to pre-prep things. So we're kind of wanting to do a little bit of planning ahead, which any any one of us crafters knows, you know, a lot of time with projects, you do kind of have to sort out what do I have, what am I doing here, uh, where am I going with this kind of a thing so that you know you have your supplies, so that you know you have your supplies and you know that you're all set and ready to actually create. So what we'll do here is we're gonna go scan, and in this case, because we want to cut the designs out from the paper, we're going to go to direct cut and start. So it's gonna scan that paper in. And I like to do this so when I'm traveling, I don't wanna have a huge stash of supplies and like a lot of bulk. I hate when I'm traveling and I feel like I have too much stuff. Um, oh, that always May, weighs up. How about you? May, you would never want to travel with me. I'm a nice You have person. lots and lots of stuff? 
Oh yeah, I am. I am usually the one with the three seventy pound suitcases because seventy pounds is like the cutoff, and uh, yeah, that's me. But I always bring my samples with me, like for the fashion shows and things like that. And I cannot seem to downsize that. So I'm going to love what you show because I'll be able to bring even more. <laughs> it's you know what you can actually. When I downsize like this, I can actually bring a whole bunch of stuff while looking like it's super compact because you've pre-cut or pre-designed or pre-planned. And I do have this rule. So first let's go, let's see, we'll, we'll cut a couple of these out. So I'm going to not do the whole page just for time purposes. I'm going to pull in like so. And it's just gonna take a moment to take a look. That's really cute paper, May. Isn't that fun? It's And, and these will be fun, I'm thinking for my for my journal here okay and it's got a couple of finicky things so what we're gonna just do is we're just going to go up in ignore object size until all the funky stuff disappears and all that's left are my nice smooth outlines and we can cut an edge around it if we want to have an outline edge or not i'm going to go ahead and leave an outline edge and then we're gonna cut, and half cut is on because I was cutting vinyl yesterday. So we're turning half cut off because we want it to cut all the way through our paper. And then that'll just take a couple seconds to cut out. And this is something I'll do for two different things. If I am scrapbooking and I have kind of an idea in mind, I'll go ahead and pre-cut shapes like this. I'll also take, like different pattern papers and things and pre-cut basic shapes. Think like stars or circles or hearts or flowers or those kind of basic shapes that you use on a lot of different topics. And I'll have them like a baggie of them. Just fill a baggie with them. It'll use up my scraps, but it'll also condense. You think about how many die cuts from the machine we could get into one little sandwich bag. It's a, a lot. lot. A lot. It's a <laughs> lot. So you'll feel like you have all the stuff. Okay, and there we've got our. Oh my gosh, how cute is that? Isn't that cute? So we've got we've got them cut out. Now these can get added, and then we can keep on adding more and more and more if we would like. Or you know, just depending on what we want to do. So I was mentioning before the other way that we can do this is you know especially with scraps of paper, and we'll just pick a real easy one here. Let's see. We'll pick a circle. Oh, and I'm gonna go ahead and scan this material in just so we can see where our material is. I love this idea because there are so many times when I'm traveling, even when I'm not traveling, and if I'm just going up to the cottage, I am always taking notes or writing something in my journal and to have those where I could automatically stick it in there and not have to worry, have a whole pile of different options to use. I think that's a great idea, May. So the scanning just lets me see where the material is and then I can move my design around to fit within it. And this, I do, this is how I deal with all my scraps. I don't keep scraps. I get them all cut up with the scanning cut and into a bag for future use because I can always use them. I can always use those scraps for something if they're already set. And not just for paper, for things like fabric or felt, you can always either Depending on what it is, I'll either cut it into squares or rectangles, or I will use the scan and cut to cut a shape that is useful, universally useful. So there we go. So now this one can get added. So we're just, you can just keep on adding to your collection and you'd have a lot, right? You would have a lot of shapes and pieces to pick from, but your, the amount of bulk that you would be packing would be very, very small. So, so if you're like me and you get overwhelmed with there's too much stuff and I have to pack for, you know, I have to pack for the kids and for the dogs and we're camping. So there's limited space. How much space I have is very limited. And, you know, this, that, and the other thing, if I pre-cut everything, well, then it's going to be just a lot easier for me to get all the stuff I might want in there. That's a great idea. Yeah. So we've got that. Then my next one is for us to use the drawing feature. So the drawing feature, we have the universal pen holder, which I have one right here. There we go. And you put the pen in, although in this case, we need to make sure that the pen 
is actually, so make sure that the pen is actually open. Um, in that case, the pen was closed. So the, the tip of that pen was not out, so it wasn't going to accurately measure, but we just wanna make sure it's touching there. And then this, I'll just move this over. So all you do is pop the blade out and pop the pen in, that's it. Nice and simple. And then there's a couple different ways that we can use the draw function here. So way number one, which is always fun, is we can pick a design and let's look and see, oh, there's my stylus. I think we have, here's a fun one, we'll do this one. So we're gonna do the outline there. And okay. So you'll notice the paper still shows up. That's just because I didn't clear that. If I need to clear it, all I have to do is rescan and it will clear it. But I'm not too worried about that. Let's see. We can go into edit if we wanna make her bigger. So one of the fun things I can do is pick designs that are more intricate and draw with a pen. And we're just gonna select draw now instead of selecting cut and start. Oh, okay. So it's telling me, and I love this, whenever there's something like this, um, the, the scanner switch, they want it up to level two. And it shows me exactly what it's talking about. And it's just a flip of a button. So easy. I love that it makes it so easy. So even if I don't remember something, it prompts me right away. That's my favorite thing too, because you use a scan and cut a little bit more than I do. And there's always times I'll go back between the vinyl and the paper and it will remind me, which is fantastic. <laughs> yep. So now it's just going to draw. So in this case, what my idea is coloring book pages. I can uh -huh. make des take designs from here and make myself coloring book pages that I can then color and play with. And you know, even, even if you're not super into coloring book for coloring book's sake, you can color these designs. Like let's say you're, I'll do it sometimes if I'm plotting a hand embroidery project and I'm trying to look at colors, I'll color it in to see if I like it or how I like it all filled out with different colors before I commit to all the hours that a hand embroidery project takes. That's a great idea. Also, for those that have younger children and they're gonna go on a trip, guess what? This would be a great thing to take long for them to play with. And you can oh, make it- definitely. Yourself. Definitely, and it's just, yeah, it's just going away, doing its thing. And I think, I always kind of keep an eye because it can happen if the, if the ink gets a little dry. Sometimes the ink will get a little dry. And if that happens, all you're gonna do is just set it back up, or you can also always pause it if you need to pause it. I can't really tell the way it is if my pen's dry, but if your pen's dry, don't freak out. There's, <laughs> there's multiple things we can do. We can run it a second time, you can alter it, or, you know, and different pens run differently. I haven't used this particular pen in quite a while, so I have no idea how it's turning out. And I do that on purpose to myself sometimes because then I can show you what I would do or do differently or change. And in this case, I can see it is, it's running, it's a little dry. This was so, one May, of my favorite pens. May, this all, this actually comes in then, because Charlotte says, how do you know what pen is the best to use in the scanning class? So the short answer is, the short answer is to try, to try different pens and see what ones you like or what ones work. Um, in this case, this was one of my favorite pens, but I wasn't sure because I haven't seen one of these in my stash in so long. Is it old? Is it dry? It seems to be working, but will it hold up? These are all things that the only way to really know is to try it. And if you're not sure or you don't want to waste materials, then just get a piece of printer paper or inexpensive paper to work on first to check, to see. It'll also depend on the product on the image what what you're drawing onto so you can see my pen started to get a little weak here right so there's a there's some spots where it's a little spot that doesn't matter because i'm just practicing and i'm just trying to see if this is going to make the embroider if this is going to work for the hand embroidery project i intend so in that case then it doesn't matter don't worry about it or you could always have just left it alone and just got a different pen or set this pen up differently and redrawn it Generally speaking though, what you're really looking for is what I would call a juicy pen. 
you know, a pen that stays really nice and fluid and doesn't dry up or get finicky. That's what you're really looking is for a pen that wants to stay, you know, that just goes and goes and goes and goes and doesn't ever skip or doesn't ever get lighter or require heavier pressure or any of those things. That's really the best pen. Yeah. Juicy pen. That's what you're looking yes. for. Juicy pen. <laughs> yes, absolutely. Now, before we go on, Angela, I think you had something you were going to tell us about the site, the brother site that's new. Yes. So, so many of you have asked, when is the blog coming back? Where are all the projects? Well, it was transitioned. The brother blog for brother sewing and crafting has moved over to its new location. And I have a link right here. I'll put it on the bottom. There you go. And it's kind of a long link. So hopefully you'll get that. I also, uh, a really easy way to do it. I'll show you. Click brothersos.com. That will automatically take you to brotherusa.com or brother-usa.com. And if you scroll down to the bottom of the page, it says crafting blog and it says sewing blog. So in case you can't remember that whole URL that I'm scrolling, I'll leave it scrolling though while you keep going, May, so people can jot it down, take a picture. But on that blog, and I think I actually, I do, I have it right here just to show you real quick. Just going to share my screen. Here we go. If you look on here, this is at brothersows.com or brother-sows or brother-usa right here. And if you scroll all the way down to the bottom, you see there's a lot of projects you can work on now. The website looks fantastic. And way down here, I put my glasses on, that's way far away. <laughs> right here, you'll see uh, the blog and you'll also see, um, here you go, Stitching Social Blog and Brother Crafts Blog. And I have them open. So here's the crafting section. Actually, here you go. Here's the Stitching Social Blog. Here's the new home for it. You can see projects that have been updated there. And they're also itemized, so you can quickly search. I know some of you had actually emailed recently looking for something. And <laughs> May, I'm sorry. We've had so many live shows, and I have them somewhat itemized, but it's hard to find all of these. So this will make it very easy to find a lot of the projects. And then on the crafting side, here's the Brother Crafts. And it looks fantastic. There's one of your projects, May, right here. Actually, there's another one of your projects. <laughs> if you're looking for some good projects from May, you can go here and to her website, which I'll- Yeah, there's two more, there's lots. <laughs> there's a few more. Oh, this is great. This is so organized, I love it. So anyways, that is the new, the new blogs are up and I just wanted to let everyone know about that. So uh, now you know. Okay. <laughs> you know what else? I'll just tell you what else worked. Although that, the best way I think is what you said. Just click in brother sews or brothercrafts.com and then scroll to the bottom and get the link. But I did put in the search engine this morning because I couldn't remember the link. I just put brother crafts blog in the search engine and hit search. And the very first one that came up was that exact link. So oh, that yeah. can work too. If you can't remember, if you don't, if you don't remember where you found it, if you do a search, that'll work and <laughs> or you can always you can always shoot a message to brother and they'll, they'll help you figure it out too. Yes, so that's great. And I'll put a link. Uh, what I'll probably start doing, um, I'll check with brother to make sure it's okay. But I'll probably start putting a link right in the description for the YouTube and our show, so that way you'll remember where it is too. Oh, because there are I love it when I love links in the YouTube videos, so I can find things. <laughs> me too. Me too. All right. So what else you got for us, May? Well, we've got more. So originally I was gonna actually cut some felt for you guys, but I'm not because all of my stabilizer, I've been so busy prepping for summer outside crafting that I've used up all of my stabilizer. And this particular felt that I've got, it tends to be a map destroyer. And what oh. I mean by that is when you, some felts, you wanna be very careful. Some felts and some materials, when you get them adhered to the mat, that's wonderful. But when you go to lift up, it goes and it looks like, I don't know, like a cat rolled on your, you know, <laughs> or some kind of animal, depending on the color, rolled on your mat and left behind so much. Sometimes it can actually, most of the time you can then, you know, clean, carefully clean the mat and get it back. But sometimes I've actually had a couple of these actually destroy a mat. So I'm not eager to do that today. 
I'm really not eager to destroy a map today. So a <laughs> couple of things you can do. And I thought, well, this is perfect for the show because this is real life. This happens. We run out of stabilizer. We run out of, um, and actually these I want to put iron on backing because I'll iron them all together to get them all stuck together and then build from there. So if you, for whatever reason, um, you know, maybe you don't have a super sticky mat or right now, or maybe you run out of material or what, or maybe another thing. Yeah. Anybody who's experienced that with felt knows why I'm not putting a brand new mat plus this piece of felt right now. Absolutely. You just, it just having, and for those who don't know with the stabilizer, it, it or iron on or whatever it is you're using there's kind of a layer like this is just a piece of tissue paper but there's kind of a paper smooth sometimes waxy depending on what you're using but there's a paper basically sticking to your mat so instead of the felt there's that layer between it that does two things number one it helps stabilize and keep it nice and firm and set and gets you a little better cut sometimes but number two it prevents the felt from adhering itself to the mat which is a really big and good thing. I think I have more arriving tomorrow. I need to double check on that. I didn't realize I was that low. But <laughs> then let's say I really like to do, I don't know, you probably can tell. I love to do cross stitching and hand embroidery on vacation for two reasons. Number one, I can bring a ton of stuff, but it only takes up a tiny amount of space. Because a lot of times with those projects, you're working in such detail and such small scale that really you're needing a small pair of scissors and some needles and your thread and then whatever you're working on, which can be very, very small. It doesn't have to be large. So sometimes what I will do is pre-cut my felt and fabric pieces if I'm using any of those. Get the scan and cut out pre-cut them out and have those pieces along with me. Now, if I'm not sure, maybe I'm going freestyle or maybe I'm making a project and I'm not sure how many of them I'm going to make. Like for example, one year I was making decorations to go on little zipper pouches as gifts or little pin cushions, but let's say I don't know how many I'm going to make. We can make patterns on the scan and cut out of paper, a nice sturdy paper and bring that along instead. So that's what I'll show you how I'll do that now. So now we could just draw, I suppose. However, I don't want to have to cut out my patterns. I don't know about you. I, I like my patterns pre-cut. Thank you. No, so, you cut, I'll show you, you got me. May, you've transformed my entire way that I use the scan and cut. So I'm going with whatever you suggest here. Oh. <laughs> well, you know what? There's so many ways that this makes my crafting life better and easier. Okay, so we're just deleting all patterns because we're starting over here and we're going back to cutting. So whatever the pattern might be, with felt, I always, <laughs> if I'm hand cutting the felt at some later time, odds are I'm going to want a fairly simple pattern. Odds are I'm not going to want something too terribly complex. So I'll add, let's add a leaf and then let's add, let go back to pattern. Let's add a leaf and a flower. Those are pretty common for me. So this machine, and all the machines are gonna have a little different, obviously they're all, they've all got a little different pattern wise. I'm thinking this guy right here will be fun. Okay. And then you're just wanting to, in here we wanna think about, well, what size? Do we really want that giant of a leaf? Probably not. <laughs> so we can cut as many as we would like. Whoops, that made it bigger. I meant to go smaller. Okay. So I can add, let's say I add a second one and I can make it smaller. So I can have different sizes. I can cut as many as I want in however many sizes I want to act as my patterns. Okay, so let's put a flower leaf. And what I would suggest, I'm using white cardstock here today, but what I would actually suggest is look at your cardstock stash or paper or it doesn't have to be cardstock it could actually be and i have done um although it's a little more expensive and i don't have a lot at this time but you could actually use like a plastic like an acetate sheet or something like that to make your patterns um, that would actually be more durable than paper so if i was going to do a whole bunch i might do that so then we're going to cut there we go and again, just like cutting out for our scrapbooks or for our journals, 
if we're cutting out to make patterns that we can take along for wherever we're going, then what we can really do is open that up pretty wide as far as what we, you know, how many we create or what we create. And the other thing that I like about that is if I end up not wanting as many, or maybe I don't love it as much as I thought I did, or I don't want to make six, I just want to make one. I haven't pre-cut the ex more expensive felt. I just have a pattern That's a that I've idea. played with. I haven't pre-cut if I'm taking this on the road. Now, obviously at home, I cut on demand with my felt and my scan and cut, because obviously I prefer my scan and cut to please cut my felt for me. I would prefer to not have to cut my own felt. But you know what, on the road, and especially like I had said, right now I'm looking at, so we have these, and if you wanted to, or if you needed to, you could mark, you know, this is 2.2 inches, this is four inch leaf. If for your pattern you need to know which ones are which pieces, you certainly could do that. And I do have, so this is a clear sheet, and we'll cut, oops, we'll put it the other way here. So we'll cut it out of this too. This is another option you could cut out of a plastic material if for whatever reason, maybe you're wanting to, maybe you're hitting the road for quite a while or, and we'll cut these guys out again. Um, depending on the material and how you're using it as well, maybe you want to have something made out of plastic that's a little sturdier or maybe you have some, sometimes I get, these are actually acetate sheets that I've purchased for crafting, but you know, maybe you have a product that came in or you have some sheets of it from packaging that you can use, then you're reusing it and getting it, getting good use out of it. But again, we get into, you know, I can have lots and lots of patterns in my bag or in my zipper pouch and it's very little space that we're taking up. Instead of taking the whole machine with us, we've got our little patterns and then we can we can draw them on, cut them out nice and not as easy. I will tell you, I would much rather have the machine cut for me, but it's just, you know what? That's for when I'm at home. I can't, well, I guess I could technically, but I don't fly with my scan and cut generally. So <laughs> if I'm flying off somewhere, ooh, that's nice and loud. Or even if I'm on a road trip, most of the time I'm not going to have the scan and cut. Isn't going to have space in the trunk, unfortunately. There we go. You can't even really see them, but like they're there. There we go. I just barely see it. <laughs> yeah, you can barely see it. So the one thing I will say, if you decide to go the route of having clear plastic, you'll want to find, and let's see if I have one here or not. Oh, there we go. You'll want to find a permanent marker and I'll sometimes just put a dot on it or maybe put FL for flower or something like that, or make some little marks of some kind, just so that when this gets in with all my other stuff, there's some kind of marking on it so that I can actually see it. So you can see the difference. If we, if we have a bunch of stuff here, I'm going to be able to see my flower pattern much easier than there is another, there's a little leaf right there, which you could very barely see. They get lost real easy if they're not marked. That's a great idea, but maybe just maybe think of something. You could also, if you wanted to spend a little bit more time, you could have gone back and drawn right on those, right, with scan and cut. You could. You absolutely could. So we could, you know what, should we show everybody how you do that? We should, probably. Let's That's show that. a good idea. A lot of people are loving this. And also, while you're doing that, if you have any tips for cutting thin paper, there's quite a few questions on that. Lois said she has a problem cutting the really thick cardstock, and now she's having wondering if she wants to go thinner. Should she back it with something? Should she put freezer paper on it, or any tips for that? So I cut, I mean, this is very, very thin, this particular plastic, but I cut... Um, vellum, which is a very, very thin, sheer, delicate paper. I always do those materials on a low tack mat because you don't want, when it's super thin, you don't want a regular mat, unless it's a very old mat that's not that sticky anymore, then you would maybe be okay. But otherwise, you would want a low tack mat to make sure that you're not sticking it and that it's so stuck that it's never coming back off. That would be one thing. And then the other thing that you would want to do is make sure that your blade is nice and sharp. Make sure that you don't have a dull blade tearing through thin paper. Right. That's a big one. 
It, it, Mark, it really is. If, okay. you, if you were going to uh, cut your felt, what mat would you use? Oh, I would always use standard. So standard mat, I would always use that. Or if you have the fabric, um, since the fabric is extra picky as well, you would always want whatever mat you would use. And I'm seeing if this fits in here or not. I don't think it does. Okay. So the pen I would normally use does not seem to be, seems to be too thick. So let me see what alternatives we have. Yeah, the pen I would normally use on plastic is a little thick, and I don't think I have my thin one right here, but that's okay. So what we're going to do is we're going to make believe. We're going to make believe so I can show you. So I'm going to use a pen that would probably not be great. I don't think it'll permanently stick. But pretend that I went and got, pretend that I went and found my thin, permanently sticky pen. All right, put that in there. Becky says, does brother make different types of mats? Oh, yes, they do. Call your local brother dealer because there's the fabric mat, the low tack mat, the medium tack mat, the scanning. I don't know what there's the There's a bunch. Is. Yeah, there's, go and there are so many extra things for the scanning cut too, so you want to check that out. Okay, so what we would do for this one, we can draw this. So again, so if you're going on to plastic, you want to make sure, and I honestly have no idea how this is going to look. I think it's going to look fine until we touch it. Yeah, so it looks fine, but this oh, is not a waterproof um, slick surface pen. So it looks totally fine. It looks great. Yeah. Yeah. But it's also, if, if I go to touch that right now, it's going to smear because it's sitting on top of that acetate and it wasn't an appropriate pen. So just remember that, that you want to make sure whatever pen you're using is actually an appropriate pen. Now what we can do is the exact same thing. So we're not changing anything. We didn't move anything. We didn't change anything. But we're going to just hit cut. And because I used kind of a thick tip pen, some of that should show up. I say should because we'll see. Now, the other thing that you could do, and I'll show you because it's actually this kind of stuff. There's a lot of, of things to know about this kind of thing. So, all right. So, I'm going to try not to touch it too much. But you can see that the, the edge is still on there because it was such a thick pen. Yeah, that's and great. And there's none right there because that's where I picked it up. <laughs> So if That's you had a permanent up. pen, that would be a great idea. Something super quick, super fast, an extra little step, but who doesn't love extra steps on the scan and cut? Everybody loves that. Well, I love it for this because if you were going through the trouble of making some kind of like plastic template that you were going to use a lot, then it would mm -hmm. be worth the extra step of making sure you could actually see what you've gone and made. Now, the, extra, the other extra step you could take I will show you because it would actually be even better. We're going to add, actually, we're going to add that same pattern. Let's see. Whoops. I keep hitting the wrong thing. There we go. Okay. So that's big, but what we're going to do is go into edit. And I'm going to make this guy bigger. And I'm also going to move him. Okay. I've got a plan. I promise. Okay. So we're going to put that. We're gonna put that in the middle. So we could do a different pattern or you could do the same pattern actually. And now I've gone and decided I wanna do that. That's so funny. I've gone and changed my mind. So we're gonna make this bigger. We're gonna add one of it. And I'm gonna get rid of that flower because I changed my mind. And then we're gonna go in and make one of these bigger. One of these smaller. Okay, so what we could do here is go back to drawing. All right, so we can draw this. And then what this is going to do is draw the shape that we are cutting out inside the shape. And what that will do is show us exactly what this pattern is 
when we go to reference, well, which one am I looking for? Which one do I want? Watch this. Okay. And then you're not moving anything. You're just going to click back. And then you're going to go into edit. And you see that the small one is selected. So you hit delete because we don't want that to cut. And then we just cut that big outline. Oh, yeah. Now, see, this opens all kinds of doors. And I mentioned before, we can cut the actual materials we work with. So we can cut the paper, the felt, the whatever it is. I just know that I'm not always that pre-organized. So I'm not <laughs> always I'm not always ahead of the game by that much that I know exactly what it is that I'm looking for. Let's see, okay, so it's going again because for whatever reason, it doesn't think that it cut all the way through. So if that ever happens and you're like, but you already cut, well, for whatever reason, the machine feels that it didn't cut properly, so it's, it's going again. So see, look, now you would have. Oh yeah, Marsha, that's what Marsha said. I would draw a smaller one and then good, you, great minds think alike. <laughs> yep. Yep, so that way you would see exactly what that shape is and then when it's in with all your stuff, you'll definitely know. Just make sure it's something that can write on slick surfaces and that's something you can test just before you ever get the machine out. You can just test in a corner of whatever material it is that you're trying to cut. And if you're wondering, well, why plastic over paper? Well, the more, the more we edge this with pen and the more we use it or pin it or whatever it is we're doing with it, depending on the material, the more this is gonna break down and the faster it's going to break down than a little bit sturdier plastic, which is going to resist versus paper. Yeah, definitely. That's such a great idea. So I've got one more for you. We still have one more. Okay. And this one, what you could, another idea. So I've got, yeah, we've got our sewing and our embroidery. We've got our paper crafting. If we're making a scrapbook or a travel journal, if you've never made a travel journal, they're lots of fun. Basically, there aren't rules. You can write about your day. We'll write in there like silly things that happen or um, things that we pass that makes it make us giggle or, you know, all those details that you'll never remember once you're home and you're not on that vacation anymore, those details that'll just fly right out of your head um, mm -hmm. or inside jokes that happen or terrible things. I mean, sometimes if there's terrible things, you know, there, there are some of my past journals that have accounts of just like horrific hotel rooms or meals, meals that were terrible or restaurants that we walked out. I mean, that doesn't happen often, but those are kind of funny too. When you go and look back and you're like, Oh my gosh, I remember that. That was a nightmare. <laughs> <laughs> and I can't believe we survived it, but we did. So some of those could be fun too. So those are all things that you can do, whether you're going on a vacation or maybe you're just going to spend time with family, but you'll have, that happens a lot where maybe, you know, afternoons, everybody takes a nap, but you're not feeling like taking a nap. You want something to do with your time, with your hands. We're pre-preparing stuff so that we have maximum stuff in minimum space. How's and that, Emily? You can have lots of stuff, but little space. Yeah, so it doesn't look like space. you're super overpacking, but you have <laughs> lots and lots of things. So another idea I've got for you this is... You may, a lot of great memories. That's the best part is like you can keep that and then go back later. And I love the part, especially I never thought of, I usually don't try to like keep notes of anything that wasn't so positive, but I could think of a few I probably should have because Wynn and I would be laughing out loud when we would go through those. <laughs> Yeah, we've we've had some doozies. We had one where we booked um, we booked like an upgraded room that was supposed to be a suite, and what it was was a converted. It was like a converted maintenance closet. Oh, <laughs> without windows, and there were still like you could see like stains on the walls where brooms used to hang, and I mean it was and it was horrifying, and it was. And it shared two walls with elevators, so the walls rattled and the bed rattled. I mean, we got out of there, but, you know, that's one of those that's detailed in the book, and there's details about that room or about that experience that, you know, would have been lost, but you can go back and giggle and look. <laughs> and you can add, especially if you've pre-cut and brought it with you, you can add your paper pieces. We could cut vinyl. We could cut stickers. We could cut all kinds of things and have it all nice and neat and small. 
so that it actually works to come along with us. And you can add all of that stuff on the road. If you just have a little bit of glue and some scissors with you, you can add all kinds of stuff. And then you can also add business cards or little ephemera pieces or postcards or whatever else you want to add in while you're on the road. Or you can, of course, do it back home. That's always an option. But you could also, you could make the whole book on the Scan and Cut. And what I mean by that is we could make one popular shape as a tag book. So you can put like um, a binder ring. You can use one of those nice big circle binder rings and just put a whole bunch of different cut shaped pieces of paper. The only thing you need to do is punch a hole in the top so that there's a hole to do it. And you'll want to use a you want to use sturdier materials like thicker cardstocks or plastics or just different things that'll be a little sturdier. You wouldn't want it to be super super thin, only because as you look through that and as you flip through it it'll have a little more use and a little more wear. Now, another thing you can do, you can double up. So on the cardstock, you could double up on um, what you've got on there. You could double that up so that it's a double thickness so that it's a little more stable. So let me show you though, if we wanna do something like that, all you're gonna do is we're gonna find the tag shape. And I never sorry. ever remember where the darn tag is. I know it's in here. I'm still laughing about your closet upgrade. <laughs> that was like one of the high, my goodness, that was like one of the worst uh, hotels. It really was. So, and if you want to get very precise, if you push this button, you can adjust separately the height and width. So if you're trying to get an exact shape or exact size and it's not letting you, you can make that happen. And then we're also going to add the other thing that I'm going to go ahead and add. And now this is optional. So I like to go ahead and add my little punch hole and cut it out. If you don't like to do that, then what you can do is just add it later. So the pros and cons are, then I'm going to go edit and I'm going to move. I'm going to move it this way because sometimes the little tiny ones are a little harder to see and move exactly. So the only downside is you really have to get in here. If you're just trying to do this on the machine, getting it dead center can be a little trickier. I think we've got it, but let's see. Uh, I want the other file. Hang on, let me move it down there. Now see, sometimes it gets a little sticky where when they're super tiny, Okay, there we go. So we'll move that guy out of the way. And we'll move this guy up. That'll be a little easier to tell. And then I'll move this guy in. So again, this is something if you went on Canvas Workspace, which is the free online software, this would be a lot easier to get very, very particular and straight. Your other option is just use a whole punch after. You don't have to punch the hole right now. You can do it after. And I would actually recommend it after if it's a situation where you're not exactly sure where you want it. Since we're just doing a little demo here, it doesn't, it's not really, you know, a particular has to be a certain way. So we'll cut that out. And once you have your size, whatever that is that you're going to be using for your tags or your different shapes, now you can add lots of different sizes in there. But once you have it in the machine, I like this size, I wanna do it this way. What we can do is just keep adding different papers and materials in here. Mm -hmm. And I'll show you one more little trick once this guy cuts. Oh, it's saying, it's saying that our paper is, is super thick and needs a second cut. Okay, <laughs> if you say so. <laughs> Beautiful every time, I love it. Yeah, so you can see, especially at my angle, I'm a little off center. It should probably be more over here. But like I said, it's it's not a big deal for us because we're just demonstrating here. And let's see. So we'll do another one so I can show you. Let's make sure that's nice up at the top. There we go. So we can just keep hitting cut on this with whatever materials we want. We don't have to keep reinventing the wheel. We can just keep 
keep clicking cut, 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 and cut however many pieces we want. And I'm saying that we can, you know, get a binder ring or something and put this all together as a book. But we could also very easily do something like making these in different sizes. So we can make these in all different sizes. Oh, there's another one. We could do these in different sizes, different colors for different projects or different reasons. And another thing that we could do, I'm going to cut one more of these out so I can show you something. Another fun twist on this. Cut one more of these. And this is especially if you're trying to make a little book. Now, a book like this, if I was going to have, say, a very active vacation and everything was going to be coming in and out and kind of more, I guess, more physical, maybe, I would probably do something like this where I just have a little journal um, with a nice sturdy cover that I just work within. If I was going to try to take a little homemade tag book like this out and about, what I would more likely do um, is either have it on a trip that is, let's say, more more low key or more um, more uh, something where you're not just going to be out and really active. Or the other thing that you could do is just do it at home or do it at a, an event, a crafty event. So here's what I'm gonna do for this as another option. So you can cut and cut and cut all your papers. And then, now what I have here is a pocket page. So I need to tape this up a little higher. But now what I have, if you just do the bottoms and sides, now you've got a little pocket page to go in there. So oh now my. you can tuck little things in there. And we can decorate it now, we can decorate it later. When it comes, especially summer vacation, when it comes to the crafting, I am just whatever will keep me crafting. So I'm at least wherever I am, whatever I'm doing so that I can still be making, that's what I'm all about. That's fantastic. I love those little pockets. Right? It's, not, it's so easy. So just because I cut the same exact size, we know it fits perfectly. We just mm -hmm. need to either cut or tear so enough to make the pocket, and then you just leave the top part open. That's a great idea. Very cute. Sorry about the echo. I don't know what that is. <laughs> That's so cute, May. I abs I'm watching the comments come in, too. And I know I saw some people saying there was a delay, so don't worry. You can still go back and watch the rest of this over and over again. Um, so, May, when you bring all of that, you just put it into a folder, you put it into a Ziploc bag. What's the easiest way to make sure, especially if you're camping and it gets things, anything gets wet, what's your idea? So it kind of it kind of depends on what I'm trying to create. How much did I bring, you know, how much, what kind of project? I have a zippered, it's not waterproof, but it's water resistant. I have a zippered pouch that a lot of times if I'm doing stuff if I'm doing stuff I'll try to put all the loose supplies into there so what I can do a lot of times is I can fit my journal plus whatever you know pieces I made for it into that pouch zip it up and then that so that everything is whole that gets put all together and safe and then any pens if I have scissors adhesive everything goes in the pouch and comes with me if we're going to say something where like we're going to be doing a lot of crafting, maybe we're having a family gathering and or there's just no we know there's going to be a lot of crafting time, then maybe I'm trying to bring like a very small suitcase or um, maybe a back, I don't know, a backpack, a small suit. Maybe there's something that's a little more hefty because I'm also bringing photos and I'm also bringing um, maybe some more basic tools or more paper more things than mm -hmm. I would bring something a little larger, but I always try to keep it contained separate from whatever else I'm packing. Excellent. Uh, uh, Lois says her favorite thing is making uh, the templates that, that we have for envelopes when you make your own cards. I just oh, did that. Yeah, that's a great I one. Them, I made them their own cards and took some of the built-in designs. <laughs> it was, oh, they loved them. Little paper crafts. And, and I saw someone else who was saying this would make a great gift. It does. If you set somebody up with, you can set them up basically with their whole kit of everything they need to make, you know, whatever the project is. 
Um, this is the SDX230D. So this is the dealer Disney model and it's a lot of fun, but everything I showed you here will work on any of the machines. The difference would just be if those designs are actually in your machine or if you would use different designs. Definitely, definitely, perfect. All right, any questions for May? Otherwise, this was a great episode. In fact, I'm very excited about that and I love the way that you're getting everything together before you go because, well, if you're camping without electricity, you won't be able to bring your scanning cup, but you could still utilize all the fun stuff. So this is so much fun. I And you're leaving. I hope, I hope those storms don't actually, I hope they pass you by. Well, if they don't, it just means I have a little more crafty <laughs> time and a little less hiking. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> That's awesome. I don't see any more questions rolling in. Everyone's saying awesome project, great gifts. I I'm totally agree. To see what everybody makes over the summer and if they're doing more crafting or less. And you know what? This is something else is my scanning cut and my tools they live upstairs in the studio however in summer it's very very hot up there in the afternoons and it's very cool and pleasant downstairs in the living room so instead of taking over my family's whole house instead of making a huge mess what i tend to do is pre-cut up there and walk down. So it doesn't even always have to be pre-thinking things through on a larger scale. Sometimes maybe it's just that you want to relocate or maybe you want to, I don't know, go watch, watch a ball game with the family or do something more with your family or with friends and be present, not be locked away. There's a lot of things you can do to go ahead and spend your time locked away, get your stuff in order, then bring it down and create. That's a great idea. Great tip there. Well, I hope you have a great vacation. I can hardly wait to see what you have to offer in July. <laughs> oh, I bet. Yeah, I'll have to tell. I'll have to tell you about it. We're getting it all worked out now. Oh, fantastic! I actually have. If um, let me see if I. I think I have this up here correctly. Let me just double check that I don't. I don't. Hold on one second. I have May's website. Let me just put that up for those of you that are new here. And brothers. There you go. There we go. I think that's it. So there you go. Mayflom.com. You can also find my website, brothersos.com, where you can get to all of those things I showed you. And our Instagram is up above. And we love it if you follow us because, and we love it when you tag us when you work on something. That's my favorite thing to do. It's my new weekend thing. On Saturdays and Sundays, I just scroll, see who's working on a project that we did the following, the previous week or something fun like that. Oh, I absolutely love it. And I always leave comments whenever anybody tags me with, with what they've done. I just, I love seeing it. I love, especially when it's from one of the shows. That's always my favorite. Absolutely. Everybody's saying, thank you. Thank you. May, this was awesome. Thank you so much. Have a wonderful trip and we will see you next month. And the rest of you that are going to be around this week, tomorrow, uh, let's see. Oh, this afternoon at 430, Cindy Hogan has her software shut-in show. It's on her page that we share here on Brother. Tomorrow, Wednesday at 1.30 p.m. is my show, Behind the Scenes. And at 3 p.m. is Emily at um, 3 p.m., Emily Thompson. And then Thursday at noon, uh, there's going to be a really great project by one of our Brother uh, educators, Colleen. She's going to show us how to bind a quilt with a sewing machine, but it looks like it's done by hand. I'm really looking forward to that because I love the look of hand stitches. Don't you, May? I absolutely do. And I'll have to mark that one because I'd love to know how she's doing that. Yeah, that's noon on Thursday. So I hope to see you all this week. And thank you for watching. And May, have a wonderful day and can't wait to see you next month. Bye.